right there in Syracuse, New York, uh, Donald Trump, who, according to polling, is 54 uh, percent in the lead for the Demo for the, the primary there in New York. Uh, Republicans and Democrats have so many uh, delegates up for grabs. Donald Trump uh, is trying to differentiate himself there uh, between he and Ted Cruz and John Kasich. Let's listen in. Tremendous crowds, no matter where we go. It's a movement like they've never seen before. It's a movement that maybe isn't going to ever happen again. And the only way you stop the movement is if we don't do a good job on Tuesday. That's what it is. We have to keep it going. You know, one of the uh, — and you know what? L let me just tell you, very simply, I'm self-funding. I'm putting up my own money, okay? Is that smart? I don't know. You know, I always say I never get enough credit for that. I never get enough credit because when somebody looks at me, nobody thinks that, oh, well, he's putting up his own money. Let me tell you what it means. These guys, these politicians are all bought and paid for. Remember it. Remember it. Look, I used to be the ultimate establishment person nine months ago. I was like the, the perfect person. I gave massive campaign contributions to everybody. I mean, I was like, but I saw the system, and the system's not working. And the system is all rigged as far as the delegate stuff is going. Now, look, I guess I'm complaining because it's not fair to the people. The people have to be — when you look at what happened in Wyoming and what's happening there, when you look at what's happening in Colorado, where the people — where the people never got a chance to vote, and they're going nuts out there, they're angry, the bosses took away their vote, and I wasn't going to send big teams of people three, four months ago, have them out there. Again, I'm self-funding. You know what? You will appreciate, because you're business, a lot of business people here. And we're going to cut regulations, by the way. All right, Donald Trump love... there in Syracuse, New York, York, uh, trying to uh, stump for support there days ahead of the New York primary. Let me bring back uh, Jason Johnson here, professor of Hiram College. All right, so Donald Trump, you know, still exhibiting. He's got sour grapes over what happened right. in Colorado, Wyoming. Potentially the same thing could happen in their caucusing uh, with the GOP uh, convention there today because Donald Trump is not not going west. Yeah. Ted Cruz is. But right now, uh, Donald Trump says, you know what, I'm self-funding. I want to remind people of that. I cannot be bought. So who doesn't know that among his supporters right now? What do his supporters either want to hear from him leading into the primary or I don't. I don't. Do they like, need to hear anything now, Fred? I don't like this new Donald Trump. What do you mean? I, I, I like. I Is like there the. A new? What do you mean? I, th this used to be the proud. I am taking on the establishment. I'm the tough. Now he's a whiner. Now he's. I don't like the rules. Oh, oh, poor me. Oh. I'm self-funding. No, 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 no. He's like the guy that wants to argue with you on Scrabble. I didn't find that in a dictionary. <laughs> Learn the rules. Do your job and take over. So does that become a turnoff for his supporters, or you know, his supporters are in with him no matter what? They're in with him no matter what. Like he said, he could shoot somebody in Times Square and they'll be in with him. But I think. I I think for people who may be vacillating, I think for the people who may have to consider Trump as their nominee at the end, this is disappointing because he no longer sounds like the brash, tough guy. He sounds like a whiner and a loser. So does that mean Donald Trump or maybe even Ted Cruz or John Kasich, they're all in a position now where if whoever their support is, the identified, you know, supporters, that's just the way it is. There is no need to try to garner more support. Is that what we're hearing from these candidates now? I don't think that's it, Fred. I think right now what you're really realizing is they're trying to still win a primary. Mm -hmm. They know they're still going to a contested convention, and then they have to go about convincing everyone else who didn't vote for them to like them. That's why Ted Cruz is saying, hey, look, I can go and I can bring in Trump supporters. Mm -hmm. That's why John Kasich is saying, I can bring in independents. Everybody knows that the contested convention is a foregone conclusion, but being able to woo the people who didn't vote for you, that's what's going on now. Hmm. At the same time, is this Donald Trump kind of setting the stage for what could be a brokered convention? I go ahead and let it all hang out, how unfair, you know, how, uh, you know, shafted I may have been, you know, how rigged the system is, mm -hmm. so that that might potentially influence the sentiment on the floor if it comes down to a broker convention. I don't think that's going to influence the, anything on the floor because that, that's why Ted Cruz is, is grabbing all of these delegates right now because these people are saying, look, I'm in a committed state. I'll vote for Trump mm -hmm. in the first round. I'm going to vote for you in the second round no matter what. Mm -hmm. But I think the party leadership recognizes this would be a mess. It would be terrible if Donald Trump got robbed of the nomination. So I think they all know that. At the end of the day, I think he's still going to get it. All right. Speaking of brokered conventions or what could or could not happen uh, this summer, John Kasich there in Great Neck, New York. Let's listen in. And uh, as I've said, 
I would never, I, look, we would all love to see some sort of a, a two-state solution, but that's up to the parties. I'm not going to go tell the, is, the uh, is, Israelis uh, how to run their security, or how to run all their foreign policy. If I have something I want to tell them, I'll tell them without any cameras being around. But they're undergoing t tremendous pressure today because of the stabbings that have occurred, and it just seems as though it's one thing after another. But I stand with them. I'm not a neutral party when it comes to Israel. You count me four square in their corner. And in regard to that, I, I believe that they need to constantly have military superiority. And I am very happy with the fact that even when I was in Congress, we began the early days of the Iron Dome. But it's become clear that the that the attacks come in every single way, and the and what I also am concerned about is the rise of anti-Semitism in this world. And I will tell you this, it will not be tolerated on our college campuses. Governor, one more. For the president, you were saying if you had a two-state solution, it would be on the parties to achieve that. What role, if any, do you see for U.S. president? Well, I think the United, look, the, uni look, you know, it, it, the United States always can serve as a, as a mediator, uh, as a, uh, and I've done this at times in my life to bring parties together who search for stability and and some level of peace um, but you have to have willing partners that's why presidents don't run around the world having meetings uh, without uh, having an opportunity to achieve something um, you have to have willing partners and right now I don't I don't think that the uh, that the Israelis have a willing partner for peace so the moment that a partner would appear and say, let's see if we can stabilize the situation, I'd be the first one there to help. Believe All right, me. John Kasich there in Great Neck, New York, uh, thinking and um, responding to uh, questions of global importance. Uh, we're going to have much more on the campaign trail right after this.